Cause he'll come through, kick you in the dick Old man Wade ain't nothing to fuck with Old man Wade might start a gun quick Don't call old man Wade a punk bitch Cause he'll come through, kick you in the dick Congratulations old man Wade For you were victorious by way of swift kick to the dick and welcome to the Old Man Wade Show. I am your host, the God of Stuff and the Lord of Laughter, the apparent petty Old Man Wade. And here, my co-host, the superior, Super Bowl Gabby. What up, everybody? It's been a long time. I was just about to say, it's been way too long since I've been able to say that. The facts. You know what's funny? Uh, I was actually thinking about this um, when we uh, replanned to record today via Skype. Um, I was talking, me and the wife were talking, and I realized, oh, shit, I gotta cut the AC off. I was like, yeah, it was a good thing we didn't record yesterday, because it wasn't exactly... Uh, the coolest temperature in Boston yesterday, so I think it's a good thing we were scheduled for today. This weather, this weather is the worst. Like, the fuck? Like, I have the AC on plus a fan. Yeah, and it's still fucking, it's, and it's still super ass. Shit. It's like, it's like the beginning of that Spike Lee movie. In um, the middle of the summer. Do the right thing. Do the right thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all sweaty. We got to see, um, oh, fine, like, um, Rosie Perez's boobs. Yeah. There's a bunch of, like, like revolutionary stuff being played on the radio. Yeah, and Rosie Perez's boobs. Yeah, <laughs> and everybody's about like one disagreement away from throwing a trash can into somebody's window. Yep, and Rosie Perez's boobs. <laughs> you make you make a strong point, old man. <laughs> that's legitimately all I can think. I'm like, yeah, man, Rosie Perez's boobs. That's that's legitimately all I can think about when I think of that movie. Oh, and I love uh, Rosie Perez. Uh, she's still she's still fine to this day. Yeah, man. She was she was like the hot older detective in that um Harley Quinn movie. Yeah, she was um um uh, Renee Montoya. Yeah. So before we get started, I gotta say that yes, I, I I'm well aware of like where this this <laughs> where this started with the goofiness, but it's been a while since we've been able to be silly and shit. But first off, I want to say shout out to the people listening in India, the United Kingdom, Germany, Sweden, Australia. Uh, where else do we got? Poland, Poland, really cool. Poland, shout out to the Poles. Uh, Norway, the Netherlands, Spain, Italy, Austria, Canada, France, Ireland, Thailand, Indonesia, Turkey, Romania, Romania. Wow, it is everyone else listening. It's appreciated. And I was kind of just looking over the numbers. I was like, you know, what? that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I dig that shit. Yeah, so, um, I apologize in advance. We, do, we, we. We don't represent all of America, so don't judge us too too strongly. No, we don't represent no. all of America. No. Uh, even for the good things, even for the bad things we say, don't judge us for the bad things we say because you know um, I'm a bit of an asshole. No, I'm about to do one of those too. Oh, I'm gonna you add one or not. Ooh. Oh, this, Damn, this beer has been <laughs> sitting in the refrigerator since last night, and that was like right in the back too, so it's like super chilly. What you drinking, an IPA? Uh, yeah, this is a hazy IPA. It's actually funny. It's called, um, Contact Haze. Con- yeah. <laughs> I got some con- you got some Contact Haze going on right now, I'll tell you what. Oh, I'm pretty sure you do. <laughs> Mr. Salad, dr- Mr. Salad himself. I'm drinking a nice little lager, Belgian style, or Austrian style. It's good stuff. <laughs> man, I miss this. Yeah, What man. are we talking about today, old man? Uh, what do you want to- Also, oh, wait, before you start, yo, our new, um, our new logo- yeah, man. Um, let me make sure I, I shout the dude out um, all proper, like, because he actually worked on um, uh, Fantastic Frank, who's been on the show. Uh, on on um, Instagram, he's Jetsetta underscore Tyrone, J E T S E T A underscore T Y R O N. Um, he did a great fucking job uh, doing this logo. Me and Super Woke had an idea for. To make it like a hip hop kind of kind of album cover, and we're trying to find like our iconic duos, and I was going through of them, and I was like, oh, the Mob Deep one. I'm like, eh, Mob Deep one's okay. Then I was like, oh, maybe like I was like, no. And then I ended up just coming right past um, the Outcast one from um, I think it was Stankonia. Yeah, that's the Stankonia cover. And I was like, that's, that's the homage homage to that cover. Yeah, that was one of my favorite hip hop covers of all time. Yeah, it's fucking dope because he's got he got he got, got Super Bowl his big boy and he got me as um Andre three thousand. But the, my favorite part about this is is how much detail he put into the Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> and like, Yo, that joint is so dope. 
and the fact that he got you know he got the lean perfect. He got your uh, he got your big boy lean perfect on there too. The the the, the man stance. Yeah, the man stance. The big boy man stance. <laughs> if everybody if anybody wants to know what the man stance is, that's what that is. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I it, we did an episode called The Man Stance with uh, Alfred and uh, Kim, which was fucking great. Oh, all right, let me get my energy. Let me get my energy. Stop myself in the face a couple times. That's what that's what fighters do or whatever, right? They masturbate before every show. <laughs> so I got a question. Have you ever heard Shoot. of F, uh, former NFL player Larry Johnson? Yes. Uh, are you aware of the dumb shit that he says? Not really. I don't follow him. No, uh, I don't. But I, in one of the uh, group threads we have, one of the group chats we have, people will, like one of us will bring up something if they see it. And, and this is L- LT, right? No, no, no. This isn't. Uh, no, not Larry. Not Lawrence Taylor. Larry Johnson. Oh, shit. And not the Larry Johnson from the NBA. This is former NFL pl- or, or current NFL player Larry Johnson. Yeah. Uh, he's like he's one of those dudes that's so woke he needs to take a nap. So, yeah. He, he- he needs to stay away from the freaking woke coffee. Yeah. So it's a apparently this is a picture of I guess the population of America, whatever it is. Um, and this is his, this is a quote from his Twitter. I see hashtag demon sperm is trending, but in actual but in all actuality, that's what those race of Nippleheim giants were. <laughs> Found in tunes all over America, Smithsonian covered up covered it up. Don't laugh. Some of y'all are mixed with demon sperm via your forefathers, Ham and Asu, uh, Esau? Esau, mating with the Horites. Horites, whatever. Uh, wasn't too long ago, a military bagged a Niflheim giant in the caves of Af- Afghanistan, as the story goes, and there was this really, really, really terrible picture of it. Um, anything serious, uh, they get y'all to laugh and mock, which, which, um, which, oh, which it only exposes your lack of ignorance, which, uh, which ah, God, I can't read to that, which only exposes your ignorance to the matters you've been blinded to your whole life. Genesis 6, I guess, whatever. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, oh man, are you saying you don't believe in demon sperm? Is that what you're trying to say? I, 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 <laughs> I think, I think this dude's out of his fucking mind. You, yo, you have to start all your mornings with a, with a nice, large cup of demon sperm. A nice, large cup of demon sperm? And you know. You'll have all the energy you need for days. But <laughs> demon sperm. First of all, what was That's de- crazy. First of all, what was demon sperm trending? So, oh, you don't know? I really don't so, know. It was a group of um, doctors. <laughs> well, they, I guess they are real doctors, but they were they were the small group of doctors that have pretty much a different opinion about COVID than every other doctor. So one of them was speaking and she was talking about demon sperm demon sperm. and how that's more dangerous than COVID that's a more dangerous threat than COVID let me tell you it's... actually no sorry I just screwed that whole thing up she was talking about hydro hydroxychloroquine yeah as a treatment for COVID which you know whatever that has its own issues so ex- ex- what are the issues with that well, I mean, damn, you put me on the spot. Well, it's more complicated than everybody anybody's really giving it credit for. Um, hydroxychloroquine. I can't. I don't even know if I'm saying it properly. Yeah, it's that. like a malaria treatment, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Since I'm looking at it and, now, as well, it, it's a suppressive um, drug and anti-parasite. It can treat yeah. and prevent malaria. It also. Uh, it can also treat lupus and um, arthritis. Yeah, I don't know what the mechanism is, like how, how it goes about treating those things, but um, malaria in particular is a blood parasite. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know how one relates to the other when it comes to COVID, but it probably has something to do with treating the symptoms, but it's not something that's been tested. And to be honest with you, I don't feel comfortable enough talking about it because I don't really know anything about it. So I think I, that's like the point. So I did see a video about it. Um, I yeah. believe it was an African woman saying that she treated some people with it. Um, and again, I don't know. We're both ignorant when it comes to the situation. Um, mm-hmm. I'm at a point where if it's something that can work, then let's give it a shot. You know what I mean? But, but with the I proper, think the issue like, is that most experts are saying that we shouldn't use it because it really has, it has some pretty extreme symptoms. Okay. Um, and there's no real studies linking it to any effective treatments of COVID. 
So, so in which, so, and for the people who don't know, like when you're doing when they're doing studies and things like that, yeah. these are like I would say what like months of like uh, studies before they can actually even put this stuff on the market because you never know what the symptoms are. And like you said, if they're too extreme, like if, if you're gonna take something that's gonna get rid of COVID but give you cancer. Yeah. Then that's not necessarily something that you may. That's not solving the problem. Yeah. Like but know. yeah, so that's why demon sperm is trending because she that's part of her whole uh, philosophy of health and medicine. That demon sperm causes a lot of illnesses. Let so me, when you wake up in the morning, just check for demons in their sperm. Let me tell you, I seen uh, what demon sperm can do in that movie. This is the end. So. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Demon sperm. It's a real problem, man. This demon sperm. We're in a demon sperm epidemic. The sperm all over the place. <laughs> so would it be, so would, can you have, it, <laughs> the first thing I thought of was demon facial. Yeah. Pretty much everybody has a demon, a demon facial at this point. <laughs> we all have demon facials? Yeah, just don't shine a black light on yourself because you <laughs> look horrible. <laughs> we'll look like the uh, characters from, um, uh, what the fuck is that movie? Oh, man. You know what? Fuck it. I can't. Oh, Dead Presidents. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why does your face look like that? I went to sleep, woke up with demon sperm. Yeah. Oh, God, oh, man. That is the dumbest fucking but thing. But, yeah, so I guess this guy, um, this football player, he's taking that to, like, the next level. I mean, there is a belief that, you know, after the flood, in order to repopulate the earth, like some people, you know, angels came and impregnated women and all types of crazy shit. So I guess he believes in that. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Look, man, I'm the first one to tell you I believe in demons and all of the supernatural shit. Like, you know what I mean? But Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I, <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you. Someone. But I'm, why is it, why is it such a, why is it such a leap? Like, why is it such a leap to believe in that? believe in one thing and not believe in demons bro. like if you believe in demons no because there are certain things that I can actually prove and some things that I have to go with on faith and I have more faith in the things that I that I can see and physically touch than um than an idea you've seen a demon uh no no I mean I've been to Matt Van and Roxbury a few times so maybe. oh my god <laughs> look man I look. I, if something's tangible, then yes, I can believe it. But if you're gonna tell me something that like you're gonna tell me like demon spurred on something that's not proven, uh, no, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do it. I don't know. I don't believe in any of it to be honest with you. But I kind of. Well, the reason why it's hard, I don't. I don't try to judge people for believing in this stuff. But it's just, it's hard not to be worried, because I think part of the problem with like this COVID situation and the fact that it's spreading the way it is is because so many people are are willing to go with their gut right like they don't listen to experts they don't believe experts they'll rather believe whatever mythology that they grew up with right um and if you are if you are able to believe anything like that you're you're able to anybody can make you believe anything right like it's possible for you to believe that demon sperm is causing COVID. like why not so here's my thing even let's just say for because i'll be i'll be the first to admit that when this first started in excuse me when it when the first uh, when we stopped recording face to face one of the mm -hmm. things you told me was like no this is really that you and my wife were telling me like how serious it was and I didn't really take, I was like, eh, it'll blow over in a little while. But until then, like, you know, I'll take the proper precautions because that's what, you know, that's what my wife wants me to do. So because, uh, because it's a responsible, uh, course of action, I did it. You know what I mean? So like, I, like you guys know better than I do. So what's the harm in like wearing a mask? What's the harm in washing my hands about five times a day? Like, you know what I mean? It's no big deal. So why should I care if I have to do that? Because at the, at the end of the day, Let's just say, let's just say, for example, that we're both a thousand percent wrong. It is demon sperm, and what we need is a Necronomicon um, to to settle this all up. If we just wore masks, and wash our hands more often, what do we lose in the process? <laughs> yeah, I, that's. I mean, that's a good point. We really don't. You really don't lose anything. 
but it doesn't matter because again it goes by beliefs right like people cer- certain people believe that you know you're taking away their freedom and liberty by telling them they have to wear a mask or telling them they have to wash their hands right like that's their belief and it's hard to argue with that because in the face of, of, of like strong beliefs facts really are ineffective well which is which is hilarious in itself that you say like facts are ineffective I was actually having it's like, a, it's like, it's like you know wind Pokemon fighting ground Pokemon man it's not very effective <laughs> I had a conversation with this dude and um, there's a wrestler who was saying how he shouldn't have to be forced to wear a mask and he goes you wouldn't like it if I came in your house, took all the meat out of your food, and replaced it with vegetables and vegan food. So don't tell me to wear a mask. And I'm like, there is a huge difference, you stupid fuck. Uh, for example, and I, and I think the best um, analogy that I saw was um, people use uh, the example of peeing. If neither one of us have jeans on and one of us pee, and both one and um, both of us pee, we're both getting pee on. But if one of us is wearing jeans... Yo, that's a funky situation. Like, how did we even end up in that situation, like, pantsless and having to pee so bad that we just pee on each other? Because people that's don't... That's a crazy cause, scenario. Because people don't want to wear masks, so they now have to break it down to the point with piss. Protection. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, so, but it's like, okay, so, now one person has on jeans and the other person doesn't. You're still going to get peed on, but at least they're the, uh, there's some layer of protection. But now if we both have pants on and we both pee no one's getting pee on them. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I that, hate, that makes sense. Like, I hate but, words but, too. Imagine. I mean, you're both getting pee on you. It's just your own. Well, not really. If, if we both have on jeans and no one's getting peed on. You're getting pee on. By your Am I getting yeah. peed on in this situation? Uh, but it'll be, it's your own piss. It's my own piss. It's your own piss. All right. <laughs> COVID. But is, is anybody ever really getting peed on? If you think about it? Aren't uh, we all getting peed on? Uh, no, we're all getting nutted on by demons, bro. Ah, uh, and see, and that, my friends, is the whole point. Uh, demons, bro. Demons, bro. What if iTunes was? I wonder if iTunes was such a demons, bro. I mean, demon isn't a slur. Demon. Sperm isn't a slur. Yeah, Put good. them together. The best part of waking up is demons, demons sperm. in your cup. <laughs> the demons, sperm in your cup. <laughs> so, uh, did we solve COVID? Uh, do we saw COVID? No, but wear a fucking mask. Oh, wear a mask, people. And what's up, Valkyrie? Hey. With our normal enthusiasm, as always. Uh, so next up, we have um, a woman who will remain nameless who said, and I quote... Hillary Clinton. <laughs> no, not even close. Um, I hate the quote, I only buy slash do stuff for a girl if she's my girlfriend <laughs> face asses. Shut up. Just say you're poor. Wow. Okay, here's my thing. Here's my thing about this comment. And this is another one of those people who has an audience to um, to maintain and to, like, keep in. And so, like, under it's a bunch of, girl, I hate those broke-ass niggas. And da 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 And dude's going, yeah, I do that, too. I would just buy any girl anything because I got the money. And niggas who do it ain't just broke. So, Yo, Mark, I might need you to do me a favor. Can you just rewind that? Can you, um... Can you can you reread that quote? Cause I missed it. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no big deal. Uh, I hate the quote. I only buy slash do stuff for a girl if she is my girlfriend. Um, end quote. Face asses. Shut up. Just say you're poor. Wait, what? So he says he only do so things. He, ra- he only does things no, for his so- girlfriend. So yeah, so, it, so some ratchet ass chick wrote something because she was aggravated because some dude wouldn't buy her shit because she wanted him to buy her shit. And he That's said, what that sounds like. <laughs> and, and, and um, and he and basically whatever it was, it's like I'm only buying this. I only buy something. I only buy shit if you're my girl. Which okay. So here's my thing about that. Here's the, my thing about that conversation. Um, I am very anti buying random women drinks at clubs. Never have. Never will. If we're out partying and you're with some friends, then absolutely, I will buy I will buy drinks, I will pay for Ubers, if we're all together in this and we're friends. But if you're just some random woman that I know, like, no, I'm not buying you anything. That doesn't make any sense to me. Even if I had the money, I'm still not doing it. 
you just you're just like f you. Yeah, essentially. I don't know, man. You 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 kind of a gift giver. I don't think I believe you. Yeah, I'm a gift giver with people that I care about. Yeah, so that's women too, right? Yeah, but that's my point. Like I'll buy like when me and me and Valkyrie go out and we hang out with our friends. Yeah. I'll buy around for everybody. That's men, yeah. women. When me and yeah. you go out, I buy stuff for, um, for Shanice. I'll buy stuff for Wait, Amanda. wait, what? Dog, you know what I mean. Like, when we, I, like I buy rounds of drinks and stuff like that. Watch like, your mouth. My, my bad, dog. When, like, when birthdays come <laughs> around, like, um, like, people get gifts. But if I just don't know you and, like, you know what I mean? And even the women, I was just fucking. It's like, yeah, like, if we're just fucking and we're hanging out, then, yeah, I'll buy, I'll buy dinner and shit like that. But I think, but that, but he didn't say random women. He just said he won't buy, he won't buy shit. No, that's for a, no, anybody no. that's not his girlfriend. Yeah, but it's, you know, this is a woman who's no, this is a woman saying she hates dudes who say that. And I honestly don't think that's a problem with that. If you're like, hey, I'm not buying you anything because you're not my girl, I don't see any problem with that. It's their money. Do what you want with it. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I'm just like, I get that. I just don't. I don't think it's a big deal to. If you're, especially if you're a single person, and if you have money, say again. I mean, if you're if you're single and you have money, and you have the resources, and you like giving gifts to people, I don't see why I don't see what the problem is. There isn't a problem. There's no problem doing it. Yeah. But I also don't think you should be like so much expecting it. Yeah. The problem mm-hmm. is is uh, is the way that was worded made it sound like it was a chick just expecting something from a dude that. Just because she's a chick. And knowing her track re- record and the stuff that... Um, I don't know who you're talking about. I have no idea. And I and don't... Judging by the, the person who um, who tweeted that, like, her whole thing has been about um, if dudes don't buy you anything, then they're broke. If dudes don't do this for you, then they're this. It, it's like... The people, I mean, they might be broke, but is that a problem? Shit. Okay, apparently. Apparently. Uh, according to them, it is. And if you're just... But even then, if, if someone says to you, I'm not doing this because, that's their reason. That should really be the end of it. I've never, as a female, and I could, I've, uh, people have bought me drinks before, yes, like, when I've been out, but I've never, I've never asked somebody to buy me a drink, and I've never expected it. It's happened. But, also, I've never gone on a date either and expected a man to pay for my date either, like, on a first date or anything like that. Ever. Like, I just don't understand females like that, that expect that. Why? 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 Like, you, you want the ability to be, like, you know, like, a strong woman, but, like, and you don't want to be talked to, like, a 50s housewife, then why are you still expecting dudes to pay for all your meals? Like, are you broke? Well, that's, Probably. <laughs> well, well, that was my problem with a lot of double standards, is, like, there are certain things you can't do because, like, it's like, oh, well, you can't do that because, well, no, you have to do this because you're this, or you have to do that because you're that. Like, the dude's getting shamed for having an only, for having an only fans. Like, all right, if he's making money, like Safari, he has an OnlyFans. He's making a good amount of money doing doing his thing on that. But it's like, he's getting shamed for it. It's like, dude, how is he getting shamed for making a, an, a good amount of money when he can't go out and tour and shit? This, wait, was Safari touring? I don't know if he was touring. he was doing? I don't know if he was touring. But like, oh, okay. Was, <laughs> yeah. He, so, touring, I, feel like, I feel like Safari's OnlyFans page would have happened regardless. Probably. But, like, there's no reason to shame him for it. I don't think you shame anybody for doing that shit. I love shaming people. Well, King Shane Kings. Yeah, King Shane Kings. So, yeah, but even even with that though, we're not really like shaming anybody. If you're not hurting anybody, you do your thing. Like, we're, we're, I don't think it's that big of a. I don't think that it's that big of a problem. I don't think there's a bunch of women out here like expecting shit. I just think it's just are like you, that are one. Are you serious? You would be surprised, huh? Dog, <laughs> it's, it's really bad. Like it's there are a lot of really, females. What, do you, what does that even mean? Is it like is it like t- nine out of ten women or like I have been. Just, Friends with women who literally thought they did not ever have to pay with anything for anything with their man ever. But that was, was that the majority of your friends? No, I, but I've known several women like that. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure you know a lot more women that aren't like that. Well, yeah, I know I do. But even in the negative, well, um, the, the negative doesn't necessarily always outweigh the positive. But even if it's like sixty forty, that's yeah. still a lot. But well, I mean, I mean, it's, I don't even I. I don't no, know, I don't think 60, it's 40. 60, 40. And I, and I think it's changed. There's, a, there's, there's, there's a percentage of guys that pretty much do the same thing. There's a yeah. percentage of guys that would be homeless right now if they didn't have, if they a don't house. have a relationship. Yeah, and they're, right? they're, they're, they're bitch ass niggas too. <laughs> I'm, not, yeah, so, I'm, not excluding, but, I'm not excluding them. I'm not excluding them no, either. If you're a homosexual, I, then homo. Yeah, was, that wasn't a what about, that wasn't a what statement. It's more of a, 
those types of people exist exist regardless of their gender or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that, that those really, those are just those are just lazy deadbeats that. And that's that my point with all of it though is it's like you like clocking somebody's money. It's like who are you to tell me when I when I, like, who are you to tell me I'm broke or insult me because I don't want to spend my money on you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, what part of the game is this? And now imagine the roles were reversed. And it was like, and so these two people met. And they became a couple. And this dude's still spending money on other women. How does that look on him? Is she going to be like, well, it's okay because because you did it for me? Or is it going to be like, well, now that I'm a girl, you can't do that anymore? Because I've seen that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's the double standard on shit like that. Or you'll have the dudes who will be like, yeah, I cheated, and you forgave me, uh, but don't cheat on me. Yeah. Like, it's okay for me to cheat, but it's not okay for her to cheat. Like, these double standard ass motherfuckers, it's like, that's just really, like, disturbing and annoying when I have, when I see this shit. It's like, dog, like, just, if you don't want it done to you, don't do it to the next person. I, I, I boil it down to human nature, man. Like, it's just, like, we all have the capability to do some bitch ass, bitch assness. Absolutely, like we all have capa- I Like I've done, I've done foul shit. I, like I'm not, I'm not as, um, excusing. What? What? Look, I'm not excusing doing, I'm doing like foul and foul and nasty shit, man. I know I am, but I'm also not like clocking somebody's money. If someone says to me they're broke, and then the next week they're like, oh, I went to New York and da 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 da. Like, all right, well, stop complaining to me about you being broke if you just spent your money on on that. But, like, when you get back, it's like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to, like, I don't know how I'm going to feed myself. I'm like, well, how much money do you spend in New York? Like, I could ask that question, but I'm like, all right, well, I don't, don't really want to hear it anymore. So I have the right to be like, yeah, I don't really want to hear it, but I'm not going to judge anybody for doing it because, again, not my fucking life. Mm. Ugh. And that's how I I feel. don't know, man. I think that the fact that you haven't, Paid for me to get some lobster tails means you a broke ass nigga. That's why I, I, I am a broke ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's nothing new. That's just that it is what it is. Well, um, <laughs> so I went to the liquor store. Uh, I want to say Tuesday, maybe whatever day it was. So I went into the liquor store and I was um this one particular um establishment. There's a guy who like always says what's up. We chit chat or whatever. And so I said to him, I go, yo, can I ask you a question? He goes, what up? I go, has uh, has your sales been affected by this at all? He goes, what, by COVID? He goes, yeah. He goes, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> yo, they're racking it up right now, bro. Oh, yeah. No, everybody's drinking. You know, it's so goddamn funny that I never thought about the fact that, like, this is, like, there's no way that's going to be affected. And originally I thought, say. They probably got a boost. Maybe. No, they definitely did. Yeah, especially because nobody's working. Yeah. Well, they are, but you can drink wine all night and just roll out of your bed and go to the office in your pajamas. Yeah, it's <laughs> funny watching the people who are in um, the Zoom parties, and it's like they got a they got their coffee mug and it's filled with like it's filled with like wine or whatnot. Yeah, and um, a little some, bit, a little Chardonnay. And someone, uh, someone taped a uh, or glued a tea bag string inside of it, so whenever they're sipping. It looks like there's a tea, like it looks like the tea, there's tea in the thing, and it's really like alcohol. That's hilarious. Yeah, man. Like it is. <clears throat> and I thought about it. Um, like there are days when I got hospital appointments, so I'm like, wait, I don't even have to put on pants for this shit. Nope. Mm-hmm. Fuck that noise. I'm like, I'm the therapy of my boxes and a t-shirt. Well, that I think that's the opposite right there. I think the pants industry is probably falling apart at the moment. More like clothing. Yeah. You, you know what's funny? You're right, though, because someone asked me about, because uh, I usually buy a bunch of T-shirts, and someone sent me um, some images of some. It's gone. Oh, I'm like, yeah, but I haven't bought a T-shirt in a while because it's like, where the fuck am I going? Yeah. Lord and Taylor just um, filed for bankruptcy. What? Yeah, man. So, question for you. How do you feel about kneeling? Kneeling? Yes, like, like, for like the... In what context? What? <laughs> like, when time to get freaky, or like, when you're trying to so, represent the Black Lives Matter movement by protesting a racist society? Uh, the latter. Oh, I think it's pretty good. Uh, how do you feel about people who don't kneel? Mm, I don't really care. That's on them. So, Duke, uh, from the Duke's Loves Wrestling Podcast, Wrestling Podcast, uh, really good guy, really good friend of mine, I'd like to say. Uh, he had 
um, some thoughts on it, and I thought his opinions on it were like were spot on. Um, uh, da, 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 hold on. So Duke had a stream of uh, tweets that made a lot of sense to me, so I thought I would share it. Uh, folk more invested in kneeling than they are in reform. I could care less if you kneel, stand up or hop around, just make sure you call your local um, local elected officials and let them know it's just, uh, the systemic racism is um, with, um, within, yeah, within law enforcement and beyond isn't reformed, they will no longer get your vote. Kneeling is absolutely useless if folk aren't working on reform uh, within uh, law enforcement and our, and our municipal, within law enforcement and our muni ah, municipal, I can't read for shit today, uh, state and federal laws. Stop acting like someone kneeling means anything. It doesn't. Ask them how many of their elected, um, if they're elected, did they reach out to? Ask them about reform. Folks sharing Black Lives Matter while at the same time making excuses for blatant racism. If you um, if you never say, if you never say or share Black Lives Matter again, that's fine. Just get in on, just get in on this reform. Because if all you're doing is um, hashtag shares, then you've done nothing but move, nothing to move the needle. Uh, da, 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 da. If the NHL is donating money to support initiatives aimed at dismantling systemic racism, why on God's green earth should it, should I care if they don't kneel? Do you want change or do you want pandering? Do you want electeds wearing kente cloth <laughs> and cosplaying or do you want legislation? Folk got so wrapped up in kneeling that they focus more on doing that uh, that act than they do holding elected officials accountable for legislation and dismantle uh, systemic racism. Beyond Taylor's killers are still free and fo are still free, and folk are out here complaining that the NHL players didn't kneel. Uh, I have to say I agree, because he's hitting all the points and something that you always um talk about was like you know all that's fine and well, but are you like keeping the people in charge accountable for what's going on? Yeah, I mean that's that's the key right there. I think things like kneeling are important because I do think symbolism is important. I think a lot of people underestimate it. They say, like, these symbols really aren't effective, blah, 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 blah. But they are. But to Duke's point, they become less and less effective if there isn't anything proactively happening in the background or along with it. So kneeling, um, it, it definitely brought attention to the... It, it brought a form of attention to these things. Um, the protesting brought a form of attention to these things. The riots, you know, brought a form of attention to these things. But it's all for naught if legislation doesn't happen because of it, if laws aren't changed. Yeah. Because we're still going to be dealing with these systemic issues. And and with that, people still need to be patient. Um, you can fight and fight and fight, and you can get certain things changed, but you have to remember that these issues are so baked in and so systemic. Like, there's a reason why we call them systemic issues, right? It, it's not just a fun thing to say. It means that these issues are baked into the system, right? Like, so no matter how many laws are changed, it's still going to take a long time for you to really start seeing um, the effect of these of these initiatives, of these protests, of these symbols, of our votes, right? So. It's complicated, man. Um, I think another reason why people should be wary about the focus on symbolism, even though I think it's important, is because it can it can cause it can cause people to not take the issue seriously, right? Mm -hmm. It could it could it could make it so when it comes to to police violence in kneeling, right? Instead of people thinking about police violence, all they'll start thinking about is the kneeling. So that's a risk as well. So um, I don't know. I think what Duke said is important, and um, people should really think about think about that when they're when they're trying to figure out what we need to do to make a change. Well, I and I, and I got into an argument with someone today, who was just like kneeling, don't meet. So oh fuck it, I'll just I'll just uh, break down into it, what happened. So this dude was having a so Booker T has been on this tear recently, where he seems to be calling out more. Okay, so Naomi Trinity Fatu is, is a woman uh, wrestler in the WWE, and he went on. Uh, she lost the match, and like her fans were pissed, and this was like you know, basically like you know, uh, saying that she like they should be doing more with her than have her like in stupid situations and then having her lose. So, 
Booker T goes, well, first she has to pay her dues and she has to do this and she has to do that. And everyone treats it like she's a two-time women's champion. Um, fans love her. She's like revered among her peers and stuff like that. So what the fuck are you talking about? She has to pay her dues. She's been paying her dues. She's continuously gotten better. She continuously um, accepted things that are going on and done what have done whatever she can to reinvent herself. So they can't actually say that like she's become complacent. Uh, other wrestler Big E is he's a big goofball. Like you know what I mean. He started doing this thing where like when he comes out like he'll like literally roll down the ramp, like roll down the ramp to the ring. It's funny. It's he's having fun when he does it. So he uh, so he's basically just having fun with everything. So I was like, okay, then what's the issue? And then so this dude was get, this dude started commenting. So I just said something. To the, I said something about the dude, like you know, um, he t- so um, th- one of the guys in the new day, Xavier Woods, when um, he was um, in a sex tape um, that got leaked, and so he go- so I said surprisingly it didn't hurt his career. Um, so the dude goes, well, what has he done since? I go, he's been a tag team champion, popular. Uh, he's been a tag team champion. He has a popular YouTube channel. Been um, on the headline of WrestleMania when Kofi won a title. Had multiple tag team matches. A fun podcast run by WWE, and I could go on. And he goes, um, uh, the most goofiest tag champs of all time. I don't give a fuck about the YouTube stuff. He's a comedic. He's comedic relief on a goofy tag team. So I responded, "You asked what he's done. I've told you. I gave you the facts, and you don't care. So okay." So then he goes. You prove that he really hasn't done anything real in real significance in the WWE, other than being in a goofy ass stable. I'm tired of black folks dancing around looking dumb, dumb as fuck. If that's what you like, more power to you. And then he just uh, posts a gif of Daffy Duck um, dancing, and I'm like, so you skipped over everything I said. I was like, okay, I got time today. So basically, like, I'm tired of. So I went up. This is the reason I brought it up. I was like, as being part of one of the most recognized tag teams. Beloved fans, making tons of money in his merch, expanding his career beyond the WWE, having an incredible social media following, and so much more is nothing. Uh, is nothing, especially considering everyone told him that he wouldn't, um, that they wouldn't work, and they have. And black folk, uh, quote unquote, dancing around. Okay, you know, um, the thing, um, hold on, the thing about Xavier Woods and things like he stands up. Basically, I started talking about like he's talking about him shucking and jiving, but he's the first one to to use his platform to talk about how fucked up things are. And especially when you have a company like the WWE, who isn't necessarily known for giving a shit about black people and knowing that they can fire, be fired whatever they want for whatever reason because they're independent contractors, he's still standing up for what he believes in and basically saying, fuck off. And all that you can say is, well, he's still shucking and jiving. So it's like, all right, so then what do you want from people? So it's like, it kills me when people say this shit because it's like, like, Neil. Okay, Neil is not enough. Speak up. Speaking up and kneeling is not enough. Speak up, kneeling, donate money. Okay, that's not enough. Like, what more do you want people? It's like, you know, we're doing everything we can within our power, but then you have our own people tearing us down. It's just like, well, that's not good enough. Well, that's the thing. And that's another re- And you know, I usually get to, I go, I usually come down on this point and that social media in particular, it kind of um, affects the way we see these issues. Um, it, it, it makes the loudest voice seem like the most popular voice. And there's always going to be a critic, no matter what you do. That's true. Right? There's always going to be a critic. And then on social media, that one or two or three critics or whatever, right, they have the ability to get di- directly to you. They can speak directly to you, whether it's on on. on uh, responding to something you posted or whatever it may be, but that doesn't mean that everybody feels the same way. It, it doesn't mean that the world thinks you're not doing enough or you're not doing enough, right? Like, yeah, I get it. You know, what you know I mean? what I'm saying? Like, yeah, go ahead. No, it just, I just, the idea of. Like I always try not to use this as an example because it's really cliche, but it's like the crabs in a barrel um, uh, saying. It's like you know you have like uh, black people doing the best they can to like use their voice um, the best way they can. Some people don't really feel comfortable speaking up, but they'll find other ways to let the world know that this is not something they're gonna stand for. And then you have yeah. and then you have and those, 
and having another black person just kind of like tear him down. It's like, dog, what do you want? Like, you know what I mean? Just because we're but not... But does it matter? But does it matter what that person wants? That's one person. But no, but, and, and you're right. It is one person. In my situation, it's one person. Yeah. But this isn't... But you know as well as I do, this isn't one person. This is... It's not. But, that, but I think the it's problem. the same... I think it's... Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. no. no I, think it's, I think it's around the same percentage, right? Even if you're speaking to an audience of a million people, if a thousand people dislike what you're saying and those a thousand people are vocal, it's going to seem like everybody hates what you're saying because it's still a thousand people, right? Well, yeah. But so, there's still the vast majority of people aren't out there, even if they disagree with you, aren't out there just trying to fight you or just trying to sound like they're right. It's a very small percentage of people. Yeah. But and, because it because of social media, those people it, it makes it seem like it's a lot more than it is. I don't even think it's a lot of people. My problem is that it's anybody and like it's anybody at all. So like let's just take me for example. Like this is one person out of the last ten that is like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it was one out of ten people who didn't agree with the comment, either like really took it somewhere that didn't need to go. Mm-hmm. That's still one person whose whose voice may be louder to someone else. So you may have somebody else on the outside looking in who will believe this person. So that one person becomes two people. Who cares? We should because why should so if that one person becomes two people, now we have multiple. We have become it's uh, the snowball effect. Now we have more people who are tearing other black people down. Because so why like why does the snowball effect work on that end, on the negative end, but not on the positive end? Because unfortunately, we live in a world where the negative things outweigh can have a tendency to gain more power than the positive. I talk but about that's what I, oh, Go ahead. But that's what I'm trying to say. Like I think it seems that way. I think it only seems that way. Well, I think like it's person to person. Like you, what's like it's a perfect example is me and you. Uh, mm-hmm. Like you don't agree that. The negative energy, the negative comments, should really gain and warrant the power that they do. Me personally, uh, like, well, no, go ahead. I don't, I don't, I don't want, I mean, I don't they have the power them. that they do. It's just that's a fact. I mean, negative things, they they they're more apparent because they're negative. Yes. Right. Um. It's you know it's, so, go ahead go ahead. I, I so I'm not you discounting off. that. I'm just my beef is when people say like, it's never enough for people. When I don't think that's necessarily the problem, it's never enough for some people. So I think, so the reason I look at it like this, and so um, I will use myself as an example. So for me, it's disheartening. Yeah. And so when I, I hear, that. so when I hear things like that, so for me and the way my emotions are, it's almost like it almost becomes a um, almost starts to feel like a hopeless battle. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. like or an uphill battle, excuse me. And you start and like and like me personally, again with my mental health, it's like little things like that can wage me down into a um, a hole of hopelessness. Yeah. Um, and granted, I always say and it's, and I always say and I try my best to, to remember this that whenever someone, for every five people that don't say good morning, that one person who does say good morning is actually the one that should matter. Because that's the one that I'm actually gonna remember. Like I had a really shit day a couple um, couple of nights ago, and I was ready to like lose my mind. So I went to go grab a couple of waters, and one of the one of my um, one of the women in my building was just like, "Oh, I'm gonna buy that water for you." I was like, "Oh, you don't have to do it." It's like, "No, I want to." And then her colleague was like, "Just do it. She's not gonna take no for an answer." Just and like, and it was like really nice, and it like it really just turned my my mood upside down, regardless of regardless of everything that happened that day. Mm. So realistically like I know how the like this conversation in general has now uh, had me reverse my opinion on everything that happened so yes yeah. like the positive things in the world should and usually and can, I should say usually positive things in the world can outweigh the bad like you know what I mean mm-hmm. there they are things that we should be able to look at and go you know what it was totally worth it specifically for this conversation you know what I mean I agree I agree. Um, I think if if we lived in a world where people were more empath- where where more people were more empathetic, and then it also if the good people spoke up as much as the bad people 
And again, I don't believe people are necessarily all good or necessarily all bad. I'm just using yeah. those terms just because whatever. I think it would it would go a long way in just making things a lot more pleasant. But I don't know. It's hard to see that happen in the world that we live in. Yeah, it's um. But you know the funny thing about it is it's. I every so often I will still get this like glimmer of hope where I see something and I go, you know what? It's not as bad as like I think it is, or as bad as we are necessarily making it because, um, because like you said, social media, 24 hour news cycle. But if you go out, but like if literally, if you walk down the street, you will see people smiling. You will see, um, these amazing feats of charity from like just stranger or the, like the Jay Z song, the purest form, form of giving is anonymous to anonymous. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you, there is, there is hope out there. There is happiness out there. I guess that mm-hmm. sometimes it's just really difficult to see it. It's difficult to see the see your life preserver when you're like in a sea of like, like the doubt. You know what I mean? But I, and I think, but I think that some of that boils down to your 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 perspective, right? And that yeah. and I think somewhat that has to do with our own choices that we make. Because you know me, like I mean, I'm not, I'm not. A, it's not that I'm not a realist. It's just that I I I really do see the glass as half full mm-hmm. and as many cases as I can, right? I try to do that proactively. Even if I do feel negative about something, I'm going to try to see the positive in it. Like, even this situation, 2020, like 2020 for a lot of people is a sucky year for a lot of good, lot of real reasons. Like, it makes sense why 2020 is a sucky year. Mm-hmm. But for me, I also see a lot of positives, right? Like, I see a lot of good people doing great things. And I don't know. It, you know what's funny is like you're you're a hundred percent right with that because like watching the um but even just something as simple as like people of other races standing up and going hey I'm with you like or yeah. or hey I didn't get it um, yeah. like I guess the um the NHL the Boston Bruins are going to be um, locking arms during the uh, during the national anthem which mm. I thought which I thought is dope. Um, yeah. they're gonna be don't like the NHL donating money like that's dope. It's they like, and people are gonna say people are gonna be like oh that's not that's what's that doing to help the cause? It's, it's nothing. It's nothing but a simple. And, and in a lot of ways they're right, but they don't have they don't have to do it either. Yeah, they you don't. Know, you and, know, and, and it, God, it what's so funny about that is it's like they could literally just because if the NFL has proven anything, it's just that people don't. People are going to watch football regardless of how, regardless of what's going yeah. on. People yeah. are gonna, like the players are going to play. And I remember Joe Budden said this, and it's funny that I, I it's something I've been wondering. So what happens when all these NFL players are just kind of like no? Yeah. So imagine like first game of the season, right? And the whistle blows for the kickoff, and all the players just leave. Yeah. They just bounce. That would be a very effective protest. Yeah, and it's like no, we're not doing it. And then they're probably, and then oh, it's just one game. And then another team's like, you know, what, fuck it, we'll do it too. We'll stay in solidarity of it. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? That's fucking dope. You know I mean? Look at NASCAR. Like, there's no, re- there's no way that NASCAR had any reason to take their stance on Black Lives Matter that they did. No, at all. And they did. They did it. You know, like. It's like we're I don't know, man. Like stuff like that. I, I don't know. Stuff like that's a positive step to me. Um, or, or like just the idea of like we're not allowing Confederate flags anymore, yeah. and it's like you know they again like you said they don't have to do that because realistically do they need like the black uh, viewer no no but they're like fuck this mother we're with you guys we get it so let's do more or like um, Adam Silver being the guy that he is um, the commissioner of the NBA who, who was like hey um. If you have something like social justice that you want to put in the back of your jerseys, do it. Mm. So you have like the um, NBA players. Uh, I forget who it was. I want to say it was. Fuck it was. I'm not sure if it was Jalen Brown, um, Jason Tatum, or Marcus Smart. But one of them had Black Lives Matter on there. Um, during COVID, Jalen Brown drove from Boston to Atlanta to go lead a protest. And it was funny. Yeah. It was like somebody in Boston was like, "Oh." Does he know that they have protests here? It's like, motherfucker, do you know that he's from Georgia? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, it's like, and that's one of the things I pride our, pride our show on, 
It's like we don't need to go that route with certain things. It's like we could easily we could both be scumbags and be the be the we could be we could we could do the Terry Crews podcast. You know what I mean? Chucking and jiving. Ch- chucking and jiving, and talking about all lives matter and like you know what I mean and da da da. da. But we could do that and make and make and make bank. But it's like yeah, that's just not my thing. I in good conscience. So how much I how much bank it. are we talking about here? Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, make America not just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so you couldn't even finish that. I can't even. I can't even finish it. Now. Duh, it was. It was so. It, it is. I love laughing at the answer there because it's yeah. like um, I don't know, man. Like these, these it's just people fucking kill me, man. Mm-hmm. It's like they. It's almost like they don't want to be happy. I don't know. I, and, and that's what it is. Some of these people, it's not even that they don't want to be happy. Some of them aren't happy. Like, all they do is just get online all day, just just looking for shit to be angry at. And, you know, I feel bad. I feel I feel more bad for those people than I'm angry at them, if that makes sense. It does. Because I can, yeah. uh, I can understand it because you, like, you can look at, you know, it's funny when people always say, like, oh, you hate something. I'm like, Nah, I don't hate that because hate is like the exact opposite of love. And when you love something, you constantly think about it. It's like, nah, I don't think about something at all. Like, or I don't care about you. Like, I nothing you. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's not an, even an anger thing. You hit it right on the head. You're right. It's disappointment. Like, no. you're disappointed that you have, like, we have other black men and women tearing each other down. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, why can't we have a why can't we have a conversation? Talk to me about why you feel a certain way without attacking. I'll yeah. explain to you why I do what I do. You explain yeah. to me why you do what you do. We can have a civil conversation. We can come together and maybe find some middle ground where we're helping each other because our voice, yeah. our voice together is louder than our voice is separate. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's, it, it, oh, man, I missed this, bro. Yeah, me too. Um, and you get to play the game. You get to play this game for the first time. What game? Oh, boy. What's happening? Uh, it's called You Can Get With This or You Can Get With That. Oh boy, let's do it. Ah, sorry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just taking a swig of my beer. All right, first up, Mob Deep or Outcast? One of them's got to go. Mob Deep or Outcast? One of them's got to go. I take the fifth. Nah, man, gotta answer. Don't do that. Shit, Mob Deep or Outcast? Don't all lives matter? That on question. I can't, bro. I can't do it. You know for a fact. Those are my two favorite, two out of three favorite rap groups. And you want me to say, yo, this is horrible. This is a hostile work environment. <laughs> I need to talk to HR. <laughs> I am HR. Yeah. <laughs> I'm HR. I'm a manager. Um, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a stock boy. So how about those Patriots? They keep losing players. I'll, 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 subject. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to it, so I want you to think about it. All right, all right. All right. You can come back to it all you want. Wu Tang or a Tribe Called Quest? One has to go. Yep. Tribe Called Quest. All right. Uh, who's the worst villain? New Professor Xavier or Doctor Doom? Who's the worst villain? Who's a new? Who's a worst villain? Like in terms of who's more deplorable? New Professor Xavier or Doctor Doom? Shit. Um. Because Xavier's on that shit right now. I'm going to say Doctor Doom for now. For well, now. Yeah, but who knows how that's going to end. Yeah. All right. Uh, who do you prefer, Young Cable or Old Cable? Young Cable. Young Cable's a pimp. Yeah, he kind of is. Yo, young, pa- young Cable's that dude, bro. Yo, I you, love him. Are you reading Wolverine? No, I haven't. I'm going to start, though. So there's a scene where the, the Stepford Cuckoos do Wolverine a favor. And they say the only reason they're doing them a favor is because Wolverine promised to get them a date with Cable. That was the first issue, right? No, that was issue number three. That was number three? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I didn't read that Wolverine, but I do know something was going on between him and the um, Stepford Cuckoo. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, Rumble, rumble, young man, rumble. Yeah, for real. Uh, All Father Thor or King Thor? Technically the same, right? Just well, different parts, an older version. They have different parts of their lives and different personalities. And you know, all Father Thor is essentially Odin with thunder power, with the um, weather powers. <laughs> mm. 
And uh, this new fucking King Thor is a fucking beast. Like that dude took down Galactus. But he's I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with All Father this Thor. Is it the uh, the um, the the Thor Force that's doing it for you? Um, yeah. Well, this new King Thor. Well, you know, I'm going with King Thor. I'm going with King Thor. Well, you know, you know what's funny. I really like young Thor, like yeah. Thor, no hammer, just um, Jan Bjorn with the, the axe and yeah. the brazen arrogance and the, yeah. the shit talking. I like young Thor because he just, yeah. he just, like, he's got a big fucking mouth. He talks a gang of shit. I love him. He's, um, he's still hungry. Yeah, he's, he, that, that's what it is. He's still hungry. Yeah. 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 All right, man. This has been the Old Man Wade Show. Uh, Super Bowl I want more questions. Damn, that well, was well, fun. All right. <laughs> yeah, I actually decided to do this or that late um, so I actually was yeah. writing it down as we were doing this um, since you want to answer the mob deep question yeah I can't do that sorry you know I'll post that I'll post that on the um, old man away Facebook page and on Twitter tomorrow yeah that's crazy yeah like who do you pick like mob deep like I'm, I'm picking mob deep you're picking mob deep I'll cast, uh, I'll cast, I'll cast and go but, but yo I'll cast though I, I'm a mob deep guy what do you want from me yo me too I, shit I, cause it's there's certain tracks that I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't imagine my my childhood and my my teen years without for both of those artists. It's funny. Um, I've become more of an Outkast fan in groups. my later, in um, more recently. Yeah. I think I feel their music a lot more now. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one song, uh, Florida Man Jeff put me on to um, a day in the life of Andre. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, this song is fucking dope, man. And you know, um, people slept on them, especially in the Northeast. They yeah. just thought it was like Southern rap, whatever, whatever. Like, yeah, man. The lyricism and the skill was definitely slept on. If you had to, here's a good one. If you had to suggest one Outcast song, what would it be? I know that's a pretty complex question. Mm-hmm. But. Mm-hmm. One Outcast song. I'm gonna have to look this up, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll come, we'll come back to it next week. But I'm trying to think for me what mine would be. I want to say my immediate response is um, G.O.D. Part 3. Hmm. But um, I also think that Quiet Storm is one of the best spitting songs, rap songs of all time. Oh, Quiet Storm is definitely, that's definitely the track. That and um, Shook Ones. Yeah, Shook Ones. Um, shit. I'm gonna have to go with, like the art of storytelling. That's a great fucking okay. song. Ew, oh, well, if, if you can get your yeah, hands on that yeah. one with the version with Slick Rick at the end of it. Yeah. Oh god, that's a. In the whole world, remember that one. In that, the whole yeah. world. Oh my! Um, my intro to um, Outcast came from um, was Elevators, AT Aliens, and then mm-hmm. um, Jazzy Bells. I mean, that's not a bad introduction, bro. Yeah. So, like, for me, it was like those, because I actually remember that, I think it was the summer. Because Ooh, I, Crumbling Herb. Oh, man, I'm about to listen to, ah, oh, damn it. Actually, no, I'll send you the uh, the play, because um, cause, uh, Black Rabbit. BlackRabbit.com. He made a playlist of uh, nothing but Outcast B-sides. Yeah. And it's it's super fucking dope. I'll send it over to you. Like I, I Send that to me, please. But, like, it's, like, straight up dope. Like, it's, uh... Uh, let's see, so so you may die intro. Uh, Southern player Cadillac, ca- Southern player listed Cadillac music. It's not a V side, but it's it, it, you can't make a track without doing that. Uh, Return of the G, um, E T extraterrestrial, uh, Hootie Who. I love that fucking song. Uh, Two dope boys in a Cadillac. Slump plays ball. Happy Valentine's Day. That is my shit. Every day the bo- oh, that's another one. I didn't appreciate. Uh, the love below until late last year. I really I liked it when I heard it, but like one day I was just I was walking home from work. I got off at um in the morning, and I kind of needed something to kind of mellow me out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was I was going through it, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put on um put some Outkast on. I ended up listening to the love below, and for some reason this time around, like the music hit different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I always liked a lot of tracks on there, like the um. The one where it's just nothing but, um, I guess, the more like jazzier version of um, My Favorite Things. Damn. Yeah. I always got down on that. Um, I love the the Dracula um, song with... Um, so, so you were a speaker box dude. Oh, hell yeah. Love speaker box. Mm. 
But again, like it's it's a it's a little more. Um, I don't want to say um, it's a little more upbeat. I think what it is, and the just the love below is a lot more laid back and. Mm-hmm. Well, I think people in particular slept on um, Andre three thousand to like he snapped on a couple of features. Which is a little dis- later on. Yeah, which is disappointing because I always because here's the thing. I can separate my dislike for something and recognize yeah. that something's dope. Like, mm-hmm. Outkast was always dope. Even if I was like, mm-hmm. eh, I don't really like this song, I knew why people liked it because it was yeah. dope music. But I also, like, what can you use Beyonce, for example? Beyonce is a great performer, a great singer, but her music isn't for me. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it's just it's just the way it is. But, um... Yeah, this this playlist is dope. I'll um I'll send this to you in a little, in a little Shoot bit. that over it. And oh man, I'm dying of beer heat, bro. Alright. So this has been the old man way show. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for doing this, Hobby. Uh hit me up tomorrow around eleven if you're up. We can um do one for CCBN. Cause we yeah, still, right. We, we still, do a couple. I don't care. We uh because we gotta talk invincible. Um, All right. so this has been the old man Wade show. You can find me on Old Man Wade Com on Facebook and Instagram. You can find us on the Old Man Wade Show. On Facebook, you can find um, Javi on Twitter, not doing shit, at Let what? Shit Record. <laughs> um, I think that's all we got to promote. Well, and then, you know, we got a couple of new branding things that we're probably going to reimagine the website a bit with. Yes. And, um, yeah. Uh, promise articles this week. The uh, Black Lives Matter one that I did recently will be out this week, I promise, when me and Javi actually talk about it. And that, a lot of that yeah. has been, like, 99% of that has been on me. Uh, so, so, so comic book stuff will be coming up as well. Um, Javi, do you have any uh, parting words? Um, it's hot as sh- balls. It's um, hot as balls. You know what's not hot? What's not hot? Rosie Perez's boobs with his ice on it. 